When I go to the club, I want to hear those club classics. Club classics. Club, club. Oh, I forgot I was doing a video. If by any chance you have been living under a rock for the past few days here, then you may not be aware of the fact that Charlie XCX has released her sixth studio project on Friday this last week titled Brat. Charlie XCX being English, singer, songwriter, cultural icon, and at the end of the day, mommy. Beginning at the start of this year, Charlie XCX would begin trickling out little singles in the form of Bondage, 360, Back to Back, and Club Classics leading up to the release of this project. And while initially I was not super warm on these singles, my opinion has definitely changed over time, and in the context of this record, I appreciate all of them damn near equally. Generally, at its surface level, Brat is a club album, which is no unfamiliar territory for Charlie, given that she actually got her start performing in UK rave scenes. However, I would like to say that this project is much more than just mindless club tracks. This project may actually just be one of Charlie's most intimate and personal releases up to this date. Before I get into talking about each of these songs in specific, I am going to do a little bit of a spoiler. If you are just interested in what score I give this project, you can rest easily knowing I give it a damn near 10 out of 10, loving this thing through and through. I don't exactly intend for this video to be a typical review by any means, more just an opportunity for me to expand a little bit on my appreciation for each of the tracks on this project. With that being said though, 15 songs to go, that is a lot of work to get done, so we need to get started sooner rather than later. Starting off the project with the nearly anthemic track 360, Charlie delivers lines like, I'm so Julia and legacy is undebated, which is less demanding your attention and more or just stating that she already has it. However, the line that stands out the most for me on this song, and it stood out to me before the album was even released, is the line, if you love it, if you hate it, I don't fucking care what you think. All this line really does is simply set a standard. If you get this project, great. If you don't, move along. This same energy will continue into the next track, Club Classics, which is basically a love letter for rave culture. And on this song, you also get a lot of name drops to very pivotal players in this club culture, being A.G. Cook, Sophie, and even Hudmo, which, if you were unaware, is Hudson Mohawk. Yes, that is the guy who made Seabat. Where I find this project taking a very significant shift, though, is on the next track, Sympathy is a Knife. On this track, Charlie delivers some very punch-to-the-gut lines about questioning one's own self-value. And I feel that Charlie does a really good job of balancing out some more of these depressive tones with the auto-tweaked, belted vocals in the chorus that certainly caught me off guard on my first listen. If you are looking for something a little bit more reminiscent to something off of, I don't know, like a How I'm Feeling Now, this track is certainly going to do something for you. However, if you are ready to just turn the energy up to 100 and start partying right out the gate, I need you to withhold your excitement because the next track is going to be a brief step down into some more depressing territory again, almost serving as more of an intermission track. Originally, I found I Might Say Something Stupid to be a little bit rough around the edges, but with further listens, I have grown a deeper appreciation for this song. For me, this song just gives a nice glimpse into Charlie's headspace, which will later get expounded on in some of the deeper cuts on this record. Lastly, I really like the hard cut at the end of this song. I feel like it does a good job of revealing how these intrusive thoughts can kind of happen, where they just show up at random and they go away at random as well. Thankfully though, after a brief moment with some of these intrusive thoughts making their way to the forefront, you do get the energy returned to you in the following track, Talk Talk. Talk Talk is certainly some Forever 21 core music, however the cutesy and lovey-dovey nature of it make this one an absolute win for me. This song really encapsulates that feeling of being on the dance floor and locking eyes with someone across the room and just ultimately wanting to get to know that person a little bit more. Speaking from absolutely no personal experience though, I love this song. And with that little brief dance break out of the way, we can get back to talking our shit again on the next track, Von Dutch. And part of the course for, again, a lot of the lead singles on this project, this one took some time to warm up on me. However, with the release of the project, I am really getting enthralled by the presence this track provides. Especially when you start to look into some of the contemporary artists who may be taking a little bit of inspiration from some of Charlie's work. 
Lastly, this song has these absolutely roaring high synths balanced out by this super deep and low sub bass that creates a lot of space on the track for Charlie to again, talk her shit. Absolute banger. Uh, Cap Capri in the distance, uh, uh, Capri in the distance, uh, Capri in the distance, Capri in the distance, uh, Capri, 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 Capri Sun. That's the next song. Jokes aside, Everything is Romantic is an absolute banger that actually covers a lot of ground. This track starts off with this super cinematic opening featuring a nice display of orchestral strings before quickly transitioning into a almost UK drill inspired song. And with that being said, Charlie is absolutely flowing on the verse for this with this almost faster paced delivery. However, all these elements previously mentioned honestly pale in comparison to the dance break in the middle of this song featuring some of these beautiful highs on Charlie's end. You also get this featuring of these really warped synths that sound like they are almost bouncing off the walls in this song that really are just a nice little cherry on top. And lastly, the song closes out with these super interesting vocoded vocals on the back end that really wrap the song up in a nice little bow. If you will, I'd like to take a moment to just rewind a little bit right here. Now we just we Rewind is again a very fun, high energy and dancey track that does a great job of creating some more of these parallels on the project, featuring rather introspective lyrical content. I really like the way that this song ends very abruptly with just one last little rewind sound effect because it really captures the feeling of this song entirely. A rewind while being very admirable is just simply not a realistic thing to happen. And again, the way that the song ends abruptly I feel like aids to that by kind of just pushing that thought away when you realize, well, I can't rewind. Great track. And now I can finally get to the moment I've been waiting for. Before this album released, I saw the Billboard Women in Music Awards performance of this track, So I, and I was completely stunned when I first listened to it. This song is more than heartbreaking, it is heart shattering, and it is truly one of the best dedication pieces to the late artist Sophie anyone could really ask for. Given how close Charlie and Sophie were, it only makes sense that Charlie would be the person to deliver this gut-wrenching love letter to their late friend and artist. This track is right on the money featuring a beautiful interpolation of the Sophie song It's Okay to Cry and really balancing out some of these feelings Charlie has of fans asking her to perform unreleased music at concerts and how that kind of makes her feel very conflicted. On one hand, loving those songs that she wishes could see the light of day, but also it being a very painful experience knowing that the person who should be there to celebrate them with you is no longer around. However, where I really feel this song just completely sends everything home for me is the fact that everybody has this kind of force in their life. Somebody who pushed you to be the better you, was hard on you, but saw the potential in you. And when that person is gone, you almost feel left with this feeling of absolute emptiness. It's really hard to listen to this song without tearing up or just completely breaking down, and I'm going to try my best when I go and see Charlie live to withhold myself if she does choose to perform this song. However, I cannot push back the feelings I have with this song. It is absolutely heartbreaking, but at the same time, I feel very heartwarmed knowing that I am not alone in this feeling of missing someone very close to me. Absolutely beautiful song. My favorite on the project, point blank, period. Okay, wipe the tears. We have more tracks to get through. With the next track being Girl So Confusing, which again does a great job of being this multi-purpose track in which, yes, it is very much about being a girl in the music industry. However, it could also mean a lot of different things to you because at the end of the day, life is fucking confusing. Again, as I mentioned before, this track is mainly about being a girl in the music industry and some of the pressure that falls on you to not only be friends with your other contemporaries, but consistently be best friends with them and making music 24-7 together, which is simply not realistic. And this is a sentiment that I can certainly echo in my own life, being in a lot of social situations where you're around people that you don't really know them and you question why you're there in the first place. 
However, as the song proceeds, Charlie covers this topic exactly and says that the real end goal here is not about being best friends, but arriving to some sort of mutual understanding and mutual respect for each other. And that is something that is much more realistic and also obtainable in your life and hers. You're fucking confused, I'm fucking confused, man. Keeping the energy moving, we get into the next track, Apple, which is absolutely, positively goaded in my book. If you are not aware, Charlie has spoken in an interview saying that this song is a reflection of her sometimes complicated relationship with her parents, which at the end of the day, who doesn't that apply to? She even touches on the feeling of kind of wanting to run away from it all in the closing lines to some of the verses of going to the airport. However, where this song just completely blows my mind is in the metaphor where she talks about wanting to gather up these apple seeds and plant a tree anew. As a biology major, I'm gonna nerd out for a second here, but if you were not aware, apples are heterozygous. What the fuck does that mean? What that means is that they take 50% of their genetics from one parent, 50% of their genetics from another parent. They have to be cross-pollinated. Because of that, you don't get the same phenotypes and genotypes that you would see in your parents, AKA you're different from your parents. Tying this back to people, we are also heterozygous. So that very much encapsulates those feelings of wanting to do things that make your parents proud, but also desiring to be your own individual who makes their own choices. This is again reflected in one of the opening lines, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I didn't pick up on this initially on my first listen, but once I did, this track started flying up the rankings for this album. And now moving on, we can touch on the last pre-release single prior to this album coming out, Back to Back. This was my favorite single before the project release, and it's still my favorite after the project has released. I really enjoy the personal lines and the verses of this cycle that constantly repeats of building yourself up and simultaneously breaking yourself down. This is a cycle I find myself repeating all the time as each day that goes by I try to just be a little bit of a better person day by day. This isn't about feeling fearless. This is about being comfortable with one's own self. Getting close to the end, we have to take a second to talk about the track Mean Girls, which hasn't dropped in appreciation for me, but has mostly stayed the same since the release of this project. I certainly still enjoy this track a lot, but upon repeat listens to this project, I have found all the other tracks to move up quite significantly, and this one mostly just stagnate in its place. I do, however, really like the inclusion of those jazzy piano keys on the back, as when they come in, they feel like they are almost dancing along the instrumental. No vocals needed for this. Just let the piano rip. And now for something I really hate to admit. It took me a while to appreciate I Think About It All The Time, which honestly kind of catches me off guard because this may be one of the more deeply personal and introspective tracks, not only on Brad, but in Charlie's discography as a whole. This track dabbles in much more existential territory with Charlie pondering the state of her life, how much time she has left, her career, and the presumed prospects of wanting to become a mother. Instrumentally, this track is a bit sparse, which may have led to some of my feelings of a lack of enjoyment at the beginning. However, after reflecting with some time with this track, I think the sparse nature absolutely aids to pulling off this sentiment. This track feels more like a free-flowing monologue of Charlie's thoughts at this point in her career. And while the ending line about potentially stopping her birth control may be just a little bit of embellishment for the sake of making a compelling song, I actually find that line to be the most striking of anyone on this track. Simply put, as a fan, if Charlie decided at this moment to put her career on hold if not indefinitely, and go on to pursue being a mother, I would not only understand that, but I would accept it. Charlie has already innovated pop music and music as a whole enough. She has nothing she has to prove to anybody, and she really doesn't owe her fans anything. Finally, we get to the closing track, 365. 
which is a track I had kind of theorized would be a recontextualization of the intro track 360 prior to this album releasing. However, I did not want to listen to the live version of it because I had already spoiled the surprise of this album by going to a listening party. I just wanted to savor the moment and hear it again when the album released. And let me tell you, the surprise was definitely worth the wait. This song takes everything that was great about 360 and adds an entire extra tank of gas to the mix, which may be coming from some, I don't know, powdered substance. Jokes aside though, I think this track is a perfect closer to the album, and some of the chaotic and disruptive nature you get to the end of the track is again, very reminiscent to some of the sounds you would hear on a How I'm Feeling Now. And if you haven't already gotten enough of this project and you want to go back for another listen, just loop it right back into 360. It transitions great. Overall, I love this project. And the more that I listen to it, the more and more it climbs up the ranks of Charlie's discography for me, potentially making a running for being my favorite album of hers of all time. However, I do have another album that would like to have a talk with Brad before that happens. My main takeaway after listening to this project as much as I have is that it is the least compromising Charlie project that she has put out to date. There were absolutely no creative consolidations made on this project. I am sure that if some of the rough edges were cleaned up or some of the vulgarity were maybe stripped back a bit, this would certainly be a much more approachable album, but then it wouldn't be a Charlie album. Again, to echo the line in the intro track 360. If you love it, if you hate it, I don't fucking care what you think. This is Charlie being unapologetically Charlie. But with this video coming to an end, I have an important question for you. What did you think about Brad? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys and hearing your thoughts. If by any chance you are curious in reading a more extended version of this review and some deeper thoughts on some of these songs, I will link down to my album of the year below in the description and you can click the link to go see my review on that site. With all that out of the way though, thank you for watching. It's been Jake. Keep bumping that and love.